Hello, welcome to my tutorial video on how to set up a uh, live drum rig uh, using the Launchpad Pro uh, uh, to trigger Impact XT in Studio One. Okay, uh, for this uh, video, I will use the Launchpad Pro. Um, first thing first, you have to download the software uh, or the driver for uh, the Launchpad. Go to uh, Novation Launchpad, uh, NovationMusic.com, download or support download and then uh, pick Launchpad Pro uh, from the list here and then go to the driver and download it after you load up the driver um, reboot your computer uh, plug the Launchpad Pro into the USB 2 uh, um, one of the USB 2 uh, on, on your computer you only need the one cable uh, to uh, because the, the USB 2 is supposed to um, for the uh, to, to um, connect to the computer and um, power the the launch pad. Okay, so you don't need an extra um, power cable. All right. So when once you've done that, go to setup mode. Uh, hold down the setup button in the corner. Go to the yellow button on top here, uh, which is the third button, um, to go to the drum mode. And then down here, you can go to uh, low, mid. Or high sensitivity. Um, I use low because low is, is the is the best for me. Uh, low means that when you when you touch light, um, it, it will play soft, and then you, if you touch harder, uh, it will play louder. So it, it's very uh, you know it vary with with your um, with your touch. Where high is um, when you touch light or, or you or you touch it hard, it, it's uh, is about the same volume, uh, and then mid is, is somewhere in between. Uh, you can play around with that to, to know what you need. Down here is or uh, uh, the MIDI channel from one to sixteen. I generally leave it on one. Okay. Um, so come down here out here. You see the path lit up uh, automatically like this. Um, by default, uh, all these colors are uh, automatic, so you don't have to do anything. Um, okay, now. Uh, go to your Studio One, boot it up. Um, assuming that you boot it up, um, you just have to go to Studio One option and go to Add New Device, okay? So you add new device, you select new keyboard, okay? Make sure you select new keyboard and then uh, name your launch path here. So af after you've done all of that, uh, you will see this, okay? This is my setting. So uh, all the names here, you, you name it. And then down here, you go down to the MIDI channel. Uh, I would recommend select all, all of them. And then uh, for the receive from, this is where your DAW receives the information from the Launchpad Pro. Uh, make sure you select MIDI 2, MIDI in 2 for the receive from, okay? Um, because all the settings like uh, this one or the MIDI in 3 would not work. I don't know, somehow it doesn't work for me. So. Just make sure you use a two, and then send to is the the MIDI note sent back to the launch path from uh, from the DAW. Uh, you can leave it on none because nothing really sent back here. Uh, but I will just leave it on either none or uh, MIDI out two. Okay, and then you're done. That's very simple. Okay, say okay, okay, and you get out. Um, okay, now that you set up the launch path row um, to talk to Studio One. Make sure you uh, let 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 create a new song. Let's call it uh, drum rig. Okay, and leave it on the default like that. Okay, once you have a new song, um, you can select browse, go to instrument, go to impact. Okay, drag and drop. And then you see this uh, impact XT instant load up here. Uh, but when you go in, this, in for the first time, it's on default. Default doesn't have any path uh, yet. Uh, although you can go to uh, any preset here and and load up uh, any you know uh, the stock um, preset f from Studio One here. Um, but uh, I'll, for now, I just leave it on default. All the paths are empty. Uh, the way it's organized um, on Impact XC is A, 
and they go down to B bang, C bang, all of these bang going down like that, okay? But uh, one thing to note is the launch pad is a little bit different, okay? So you start with A in the lower left corner here. This yellow pad is A, and then you go to B, it's on top of it, okay? Everything is like backward. Instead of A and then B go down, all right? Now everything go up and wrap around and go up again. So like A here, B is a pink, C is a blue, and uh, D is the, the green here. And then you have another E up here, um, which is the purple that you don't see. You have to go up to see it, okay? So this is the up button. You go up and the purple kind of pull down for you to see here. It slide everything now like the, the green used to be here, now it's slide down. The green used to be here, now it go up here. And then the, the pink used to be here, now it's slide down. And the yellow slide off the screen, now you don't see yellow anymore. So A disappear, okay? Now you have B, C, D, E. Uh, if you go the other way around, you're gonna see G and H, okay? For some reason, you cannot get to, to F. Um, you can see some of the F, you know, by scrolling left and right, uh, but I don't recommend doing that because it, it's gonna mess up your pad, okay? So just don't use the left and right, use up and down. Um, most of the time, if, if you double tap, it go back to the, uh, the, re the beginning, okay? So let's just start with A, okay? So let's say this is my A pad. Um, and the way you set it is uh, in the beginning when you first track it in, for the first time you only have one fader, okay? If you go to the mixer, you only see one fader here, okay? Uh, none of these show up, I, I don't know, maybe because it's already created before, but You only see one fader, okay? Um, and then you you just, let's just say this, you wanna use this path for a kick and then you just send it to number one, okay? And then uh, stereo one is kick and then you you probably use these two paths for the snare, that's what I do, okay? So you, you send it to stereo two, these two go to stereo two and then this is the hi-hat, and then I'll, I'll just send it to stereo three, thing like that. The reason you're doing that, because you want to send um, different instrument to a different fader, so later on you can use this fader to, uh, you know, to adjust the volume individually, okay? Um, for now, you see that um, I, you, can, you can name them even. You, this is kick, so, so you name kick, and then snare, Thing like that. I will go and, and name all of the uh, bus I have, okay? Um, so now uh, you've done all of that. Let's go to my uh, setup, okay? My setup, I already have everything ready. So let's go to my song here. Okay, so you see that now uh, all of these paths are filled with sample, okay? Uh, the sample that I created myself. Uh, by sampling uh, from uh, Superior drum, Drummer 3 uh, or get it from a stock uh, sale studio, from Studio One or get it from any source, a anything I want, okay? And I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, but for now, uh, just go over this um, uh, GUI here so that we, uh, we learn a little bit about it. So you start out with A. Um, a pad is actually a C note, okay, C1. C1, okay, and then you go to C, C sharp one, and D1, and D sharp one, and they go uh, from left to right, and then they wrap around up here, E1, and, and so on and so forth. And they, this block A would end up with a C, a D sharp two, okay? And then from D sharp two, it go into E, uh, E2, right into the B, B block. So E2 is right here, is the beginning of the B block. Uh, and so on and so forth, and that's how um, you know launch path organized. Like A, A go this way, and then it come down to B, okay, and then C, and then D. It keep going up like that in that fashion. Okay, now let's talk about these little uh, thing here. The name, uh, 
the kick you can just right click and rename it okay to have whatever you want um, there's a solo button here that you can solo uh, one instrument at a time you can uh, mew uh, mew is very useful because some of the path that I don't want to use um, and I don't want to accidentally trigger it so I just put on mew okay uh, and then this two circle right here, um, it just tell me that this is the stereo channel, okay? I can change it to mono if I want to, but right now I want everything on stereo. And then uh, the number right next to this, this two circle is, is the actually channel uh, number, okay? So right now my kick is on channel one, a stereo one, okay? And my snare, my snares are on channel two or just stereo two. All of the snare go to two. All of the hat go to three, tom go to four, rye go to six, and grass go to five. Okay, um, the clap I, I I group it with uh, with the snare, so the clap will go to two, and the cowbell I group it with a hi hat, so a cowbell will go to three. Okay, so that's how I organize it. Um, for this section right here, is this is how you tweak the sample. Okay. Say you sample, uh, of course you, you like the sample already, you, you know, uh, assuming that the sample is something that you already like, but once you sample in here and you put some um, effect on it, it may change a little bit and, and you can tweak, tweak it at the end um, to make it perfect, you know, the, the way you want it. So uh, for example, this, this, um, this kick here, I pitch it up a little bit, um, you know, change the filter, you know, high pass, low pass filter, and then, um, you know, I can pan left and right, but kick is like in the middle, so I just leave it there. But like if you see the crash, it's gonna be, um, this one is pan to the left, okay? And then this one go pan to the right, thing like that. Uh, so you see thing pan, uh, you know, stereo, in the stereo feel nicely. That's what you wanna do, and then you, you wanna dry out these, uh, dry punch, um, Transpose, you know, uh, tune, envelope, thing, thing like this would change your sound. Uh, I recommend playing around with it just to get a feel how, how you change your sound and sometimes you stumble on something really nice and now uh, you can just use it, okay? Um, this section up here, um, uh, let me go over it real quick so you, you understand. So the name of the, the, like, kick here, if I hit on the kick, it, it put a name here. Uh, because it's a one shot, you hit it once, it play once, and it stop. Okay, that's why it's one shot. So every every instrument in your kit is a one shot. Okay, um, versus the loop. Okay, so this is my loop section. My loop is like you you can click on the loop and it play over and over and over. So let's say I play this feel right here. It's gonna play to the end and then it wrap around and play it again. Okay? And the way you wanna kill it is like you hit it on it again. You either hit it again or hit another uh, loop to replace it. See, I, I hit the next loop and the next loop is to replace the loop, okay? So that's why when, you, when you're in the loop mode, you see all the loop that I, I put on loop instead of one shot. Okay, I put on toggle. Toggle meaning that if, if you don't leave it on toggle, you hit this one, it just play, and you know, if you let go of the uh, the button, it, it would stop. Okay, um, it it doesn't continue to play. So you have to leave it on toggle, and then you hit the note. Okay, it play, and then you hit it again, it stop. That's what toggle means. Okay, and then uh, joke, I put it on joke seven because. Every loop I send to uh, stereo seven. Okay, if you look in every pad here, it's the number seven on the corner here. Um, so, so every every loop will joke seven. That means that when I play a loop and I play the next loop, the next loop will joke the previous loop. Okay, uh, and that's why you, you want to, uh, to to joke because you you only want one loop playing at the same time uh, at a time. Okay. And then follow tempo. Follow tempo is uh, is to make this loop follow the tempo of the of the song here. 
So my uh, my tempo, uh, uh, you know, in in the in studio one, I set it to 70. All of the loop that I I trigger would play at 70. Okay. Now let's change it to 100 to see what happens. So that's 100. Okay. And now let's go back to maybe 75. Okay. So that's how. Um, that's how follow tempo, um, you know, follow the, the, the song, uh, BPM, okay? All right, so uh, now let's go over how, uh, how I set up the, uh, the in and out, okay? So if you see here, um, the kick was sent to this channel, Nair, Hat, Tom, everything on their own fader. So you can just, um, you know, level it the way you want it <clears throat> and then I create a drum bus you know just to uh, just to send it to a reverb okay so that we have reverb and we can process the whole drum bus here okay um, and then I have another uh, drum VCA here this drum VCA I can just move the whole group up and down um, that's that's the purpose of it okay so I can move the whole thing if, it, if the whole drum set is too loud I can move the whole thing up and down and then for the output, I uh, I send to main on the T channel 17, 18. But then I also create another uh, another click track here. This is the output click up. You go to the I/O here. You see that in the output I have main out to send to 17, 18. But the click track I send out to 31, 32 on my mixer here. Okay, that way I can send. Uh, to front of a house, the uh, you know 17, 18, and then send to the uh, in ear monitor uh, on the 31, 32. Okay, so that we don't you know we have the click track for for the musician only. All right, so that's how you um, you set up. Um, so for for my setup, it's very straightforward. Um, you have you look at my path here. The yellow is my one kit. Ping is another kit. Uh, blue, I set up all of these um, extra um, percussion sound, percussion sound, okay? And then uh, the the green one part, uh, the green block here is for my loop, okay? All the loop that I just play. And I, I also have a, a stop loop, which is the, uh, the button in the corner here. Uh, when I hit it, it just stops any loop, okay, that is playing. So uh, I can play. I can play live like this, and then I don't want to play anymore uh, uh, of the loop, and I, I can just kill it and play manually. This is manual, okay? See, I can play loop again. So that's how I, uh, you know, you can use it for live application. Uh, so now let's just talk about how you get the sample, okay? For, uh, to get the sample on these paths is very easy. It's either a wave file or a MP3 file. Okay, so for the wave file, file uh, you can sample it. You can use um, sample one in Studio One to, to sample something uh, that you like. Okay, let's say I like a, a, a drum sound from uh, Superior Drummer Three. Okay, let me let me bring uh, Superior Drummer Three in. This tune tracks appear in Madrid. Okay, here's the superior drum Madrid, right? Uh, let's say I go down to George Massenburg and I like uh, the Ludwig um, Classic here, okay? Let me load that kit. It takes some time to load. And then uh, after it loads, you can see this is the kick that I want, okay? So let's say I really like this kick and I want to sample it, okay? Um, let's bring in the sample one, okay? Sample one here in Studio One, you can bring sample one in. So sample one is a plugin that you can uh, use to sample any input, output, any instrument that you have. 
anything that you connect to your computer, you can just sample from there, okay? So you go to record here, and uh, you pick the, in the, the source that you want to sample. So you can pick from the bus, from the output, from the main output, from the input. Uh, you know, if you have a guitar, a bass, you can sample it. In this case, I want to sample from Superior Drummer 3, which is an instrument, right? So I go to Superior Drummer 3 here, okay? And I turn on the uh, gate record, okay? Gate record, just give me uh, two thread holes here. One is the low thread holes, and then one is the high thread holes. Um, once the I play a sample, it passed the first thread holes, and it, it opened the loop, uh, it's opened the gate, and it's recorded. And then when the sample died out um, below this the blue one here, okay, it's automatically stopped recording, and it give me the sample, okay. So let me name this one. Let's say I want the sample a kick, okay. All right. So I put kick in, and then I get go to this one. Watch, it, it's gonna record, okay? See, now it died down below, and now it, it create a file right here, okay? So that's the sample I just uh, got from, from, from this kick right here, okay? Um, let's say that I wanna use that sample in one of the pad. I just go to, let's say go to uh, pad E here. This is the empty pad right here, okay? I can just track this one, and put it on top of that. And maybe mo normalize the waveform if it's not actually normalized, okay? And so you, you hit it. See, one shot, it just play one. All right, so that's the kick that you just sample. All right, so that's one way to sample it. Um, another way to sample something is um, Another way to, to get your, your sound is to go to loop here. There's a lot of loop, okay? And there's a lot of um, sample. If you, can, if you can find a sample in here that you like, you can just track it directly on the path like this and then use it, okay? So, uh, so that's how you do it. All right? Or you can go to your music library file and go to a song. You can track the whole MP3 on a pad and play it, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna do it right now, but that, that's possible. You can do a MP3 and you can play the whole song. Okay, um, how do you create a pattern, okay? Let's just say that you wanna create your own pattern so that when you actually play a song, and, and you can trigger a, a whole drum loop to play it, okay? So I'm gonna show you um, that part right now. Let's close this one. Uh, all right. So for me, if I like some, some loop from a uh, superior drummer, okay, let's, let's pull the superior drummer up and you go to the groove and maybe you like one of these. Let's see, I will just turn on this one. Okay, make, uh, okay let, let's just say I like that one, okay? Uh, for the sake of demonstration, I will just drag it onto this, okay? You drag it into uh, Studio One, and you see that now it, it's, the, uh, it's, the MIDI, um, it's MIDI file, right? Um, you can either drag it on top of this pad right here. It won't take, uh, the pad won't, won't play the, uh, uh, the MIDI file, but once you track it on, uh, Studio One is smart enough to convert it to uh, a wave, waveform, okay? It actually uh, bows uh, off of this, you know, superior drummer, and it, it bows right now. Let me bounce it, okay, for you to see. So let, let's just bounce this section, and you have a waveform out of this, okay? Now you have the wave, you can, uh, you can put it on a pad like this, okay? And then you just... Uh, Turn on the loop, toggle, thing like that, okay? Uh, and then you just play it. So that's that's the one that we just that's the one that we just got from uh, 
superior dramaturgy uh, loop. Okay. Um, okay. So so that's another way. You know, you you get the the nice pattern f from somewhere, and then you just drop it in here to use. Okay. And then another way is to use the uh, the pattern mode, uh, the pattern editor uh, from Studio One, which is really nice. Let me close this thing. Okay. Leave it there. Okay, so look at this pattern right here. Okay, you can you can create a new pattern by um, by hitting Control Shift P P is in Paul. Okay, so you Control Shift P, you create a new pattern, and you double click on this pattern. You uh, you go to the editor of the pattern. I'm gonna close this thing. So so this is the pattern editor right here. Okay, uh, but since I already have some patterns, so let me show you what my pattern look like. Okay, so let's delete this. Let's get this pattern in. So you see this pattern that I create uh, before. I have I have intro, you know, and I have fill, and I have verse one, two, three, thing like that, and then have fill, and, and you can create more uh, like you know chorus bridge you know you can do whatever you want any any pattern that you like for a certain part of the song uh, let's just just feel here if you go to feel you see this is the section that i created let me let me hear what it sounds like okay so that's the feel feel one and now i go to feel two okay Okay, so that's how you do it, and then you can use the pattern uh, to, to, let's just say I like this pattern, but I want to change a little bit. This is what I do. I just right-click it, or not right-click, but I highlight it, and then say duplicate, okay? When I duplicate something, it's have the new pattern. I would just have to name it again, you know, like maybe few, uh, few five, you know, okay? So from the few five here, right now it's, it's exactly like few three or few few four that I, I got from. But now you know you can edit it by delete these thing, add all the thing in there, you know, and then that's a new pattern. Okay. Um, sometimes this is what I do. Okay. Sometimes I will take a pattern like a pattern one here. Okay. Uh, let's see, it's verse one. Uh, verse one is is very very simple pattern okay and if you look at if you look at the the, the way I set up here the kick and it and the, and the uh, this is the probability probability mean that when you play when you leave it at hundred percent it will play a hundred percent of the time whenever it passed that note it will play that note but if let's just say you you lower it down to like maybe 63. 63 means 63 percent of the time it will play that note, and the other 37 percent it, it it would skip that note. Okay, so that's probability mean uh, velocity. This is how strong you wanna you know the volume of that um, sound. So right now, 65 for this note, and then this this kick right here is 45. You know, you kind of you kind of vary thing a little bit so it won't be like a machine gun, and then uh, repeat. Repeat. You see, you see the right here. Some of them, it's like a, it's a, it's have one or two on it. That means it, it's a repeat. When it go by the repeat, you will hear a clicking sound. You see that clicking sound? Okay, so that's a repeat. Um, all right. So sometimes I make the the probability change the probability and then uh, make a pattern and then uh, hit a D to, to, to copy it out. So when you will copy it out to uh, uh, eight or 10 measure, it will play differently every measure, right? Because it depend on the, depend on the probability of, of the click and the, the, the probability of the note, it will play differently, right? So, Usually my loop, I, I do like eight or ten measure out. 
so that I can have a variety of things. So, uh, and then afterward, I can take this whole thing right here. Let's say um, this is my my loop here. I can just highlight all of it and say bow, bow selection. Once I bow the selection, I have a waveform out of it. Okay. So you see now I have a waveform out of it. I can just drag the whole waveform here on a path just like before. All right. So that's how I create a pattern. And so, um, for example, this section is my pattern right here. Uh, let me go to that instrument. Okay. Okay, let me stop it. Okay. So, um, pretty much that's how I, um, I get my sample in and then tweak it and uh, organize it on the path that I, I play here uh, according to the color uh, blocks. So, one color block uh, contain uh, one kit and then another block, another kit. And then I have the percussion and I have a section for loop and uh, so on and so forth. So that's how I, uh, I create a, a live drum rig, you know, to play live. Um, all right, so that's the end of the, the video. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Put it on a comment.